when are you taking the MCAT? From friends and family members familiar with the pre-med journey, this question is one of the first to barrage you after you've made the decision that you're going to apply to medical school. For some, the response is easy. I don't know yet. For others, a test date's been set, a plan created, and you're ready to go. But what happens when everything doesn't go according to plan? Hi, my name is Prashant Kumar, or PK, and I'm an MCAT tutor at Shamassian Academic Consulting. Today, I'm gonna to be talking with you all about my MCAT journey, how I went from a 507 to a 525 on two test dates, 18 point increase, and how I got over that block. So I'm gonna be going over some tips, some strategies, and hopefully some helpful advice on how to conquer this MCAT retake. It's a brutal exam, but we can do it. Let's get it. The concept of retaking the exam was never on my mind. In high school, I had taken the SAT once, one and done it, end of story. Throughout college, I same exact thing. I take classes, never had to retake a class, take exams, never had to retake an exam. So I was feeling good. Maybe it's a little bit cocky, but I was feeling confident. And then you open that score report. And when I saw that 507, I was not happy. I felt empty, hopeless, very sad. Like all that hard work I had put in before meant nothing. And it's important to note that it wasn't the 507 that made me feel this way. It was that on my practice tests, I had been scoring significantly higher. Come test day, it wasn't the same range. And that was what hurt. It was that feeling of not performing to your fullest potential, even after X months of studying. That was the pain. Now, let's get into my mindset going into this first exam. It was roughly Thanksgiving time, and I was thinking, when do I want to take this exam? I decided, let's do mid to late January, because then I can get it done before the spring semester of classes. This gave me eight weeks of study time. So I go in, I'm like, first four weeks will be content review, for last four weeks will be for practice questions, full length tests, all of that. I didn't have sort of a day by day agenda. I didn't know what I was gonna do and how much studying I was gonna have to do every day to accomplish those goals. So it wasn't a great plan. And I realized this as my study schedule fell apart almost immediately. When you come back from Thanksgiving, this is oftentimes the most busy time of the year in terms of school. I had final exams, tests, projects, all crushed into these few weeks of December. So when I got through all that, it was already late December. So my first four weeks of studying were very, very weak. I had only skimmed through a few chapters here and there, and that was totally against my plan. So rather than reevaluate where I was, I was just like, let's just sprint through the rest of it. And that was a big mistake. And so when I go into test day, I've taken practice tests. I know the material like from classes, I've skimmed through it, but I don't really know where my weaknesses are because I haven't been focused on them. And when that score report came back with a 507, it was heartbreaking. It was something I wasn't expecting. And to be honest, it sucked. But what mentality shift did I have going into my second exam? As any retaker knows, the feelings after that first test come out cripple you long after just the score date. Your self-confidence is an all-time low. You doubt whether you want to take the exam again or have the energy to study. You don't want to do this. You start questioning whether med school is right for you. All of these things start coming out, right? But what can we do to fix that? How do we get to the next step? So in my mind, what I did was started to journal. Journaling was very helpful to figure out why I was feeling the way I was feeling, what weaknesses were sort of coming out. And it started putting me in a healthier mental state. Now, not everyone likes to pour their emotions out on the pages, which is fine, but figuring out something that can break down that mental wall is very important. And so once I got into that healthier state, I was able to come up with a plan to tackle these weaknesses and overcome these doubts. 
And slowly but surely, I came up with a plan on how I was going to retake the MCAT. Now let's get right into it. Let's talk about some tips and strategies that I used to help me prepare for my retake that you can apply to your own story, regardless of whether that's a practice test that you want to improve upon or an official test score that you need to retake. We can apply these skills and improve our scores. And let's start with the first one. Let's not rush into a retake. So this is not possible for every person, depending on what their timeline is. Oftentimes there's a belief that it was just a fluke, right? I studied, I had a bad day, I can come back. Take a step back, reflect, maybe journal, think about what your weaknesses are, come up with a game plan, whether that's a couple of weeks, a month, two months, right? Be honest with yourself and figure out how long is it gonna take you to sort of destroy this test a second time. So my second tip is to find your weaknesses. And this is oftentimes one of the harder things to do because it requires a certain level of introspection. And for me, that was realizing that I had some large gaps in both content and practice. And that was inherently hurting my scores. I probably should have realized something was up when my scores on my practice tests were all fluctuating very heavily. I wasn't getting straight 130s or straight 128s or straight 129s. I was bumping up and down. And while my total score was staying the same, roughly, the breakdowns were very, very different. And so that can be an indication of some weaknesses and that I was getting lucky here and there. So the way I like to do it is to ask yourself, what are the main issues, whether it's content, whether it's timing, whether it's strategies or practice, right? Or all the above and writing that down or asking yourself that out loud and saying, how do we improve on that to the point where we're no longer having these issues or we feel comfortable with timing beyond what we were before. So being able to ask yourself and looking at those weaknesses, very, very important and building a plan to take down those weaknesses just as important. So my third tip is to map out your study schedule completely. And I mean, really get in there and think about every single thing you're going to be doing, how much time you're going to be taking for each of those parts and going from there, right? So write it all down commute, sleeping, eating, school time, homework time, working out, how much time you have to actually study for the MCAT. By putting all of that together, you sort of get a sense of how much time you have to dedicate and by then how many months or weeks you'll have to dedicate to get to your new score threshold. Another thing I like to be programming in is flex days. Flex days are rest days, but they have the ability to act as sort of a makeup day. The important thing is that we don't get burnt out with our schedule and we're able to maintain the high level of studying and high level of reviewing and high level of practicing throughout the entire schedule. Until test day, we can't burn out. And so having these flex days programmed in, very, very helpful. The fourth tip is perfect practice. I stole this from Vikram's video earlier on his 528 series, so go check that out if you haven't. But it's the idea of practicing with meaning. Doing questions alone or doing practice tests alone, sheer quantity is not gonna do as much, if not anything in the long term, for your study. What will though, is figuring out where you're making mistakes, hammering those areas out, and making them into strengths, right? If I'm missing questions around a certain topic, I wanna to spend some time going over that topic, writing down the mistake, and figure out why I'm doing that and never make that same mistake again. And so what was my routine? I would take a notebook, write down every single piece of information I didn't know from the question or a answer choice, write it down in a composition notebook or put it in a spreadsheet and go about that topic and write down everything I didn't know about the topic. So that if you get that topic on a future test or you get a similar type of question on a future test, you should be like, thank God, I've been studying for this. I've been crushing this. I'm ready to go. So my final tip is to build test day routine and confidence. I think routine and confidence are the perfect couple. Without routine, confidence is really hard to build up. Why do we take an eight hour practice exam before every MCAT, right? We want to get comfortable taking the test. We want to get comfortable sitting in that chair for X hours, comfortable taking the breaks at those times. So we are 
building a routine so that on test day, we're not taking the test blind. We know what's happening. We know how we're feeling. We know how to get to the point where we need to get to. And so just like that, there's other ways to build routine. For me, that was reading a passage paragraph by paragraph, summarizing in three to five words next to each paragraph what was going on, and then going to the questions. Another thing I like to do is not look at the time because that's a very stressful part of the exam is how much time do I have left? Am I going too slow? Am I going too fast? I had one checkpoint, question 30, where I would see if I had 50 minutes left. And you can choose what time, however much time you wanna have left at what question. And by having one checkpoint, you can tell yourself, oh, I need to speed up. Oh, I need to slow down at those points. And it helps maintain a sense of confidence because you know exactly where you are at the test. And so these are small changes that aren't going to be too hard to implement, but they have tremendous capabilities of boosting your confidence. I would write down exactly what I'm going to do on test day, how I'm going to wake up, eat breakfast, everything. And what happens if a hard passage comes up? I'm going to close my eyes, take a deep breath, and then go back at it. By planning this out, I know exactly what's going to happen when I take the test, regardless of easy or hard passages. It's the same way Michael Phelps visualizes his race before he does it, right? He knows exactly what he's going to do, how he's going to jump off the block, and what strokes he's going to hit. I think by maintaining the same attitude about by the MCAT, a daunting exam where we need every piece of confidence, if you know exactly what's going to go down, you'll feel more comfortable with it. And there you have it. That is nearly every single piece of information and technique I use to retake this exam. I like to think of the MCAT as an opportunity to show off what you got, right? Some people will not be able to capitalize on that opportunity. Some people will be stressed. But the more comfortable we get with the exam, the more we believe in ourselves, and the more we're ready to destroy that test, I genuinely believe makes you a better test taker and makes you ready to conquer this beast. If I can do it, you can do it. It's not easy, but it's feasible. Let's get it.